Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. We're here at uh, the Canola Discovery Forum in uh, Winnipeg, joined by Dr. Stephen Strelkov of the University of Alberta. And Stephen, you've been doing extensive work in the area of club root and yes. uh, changes that we're seeing in, in the club root pathogens, mm -hmm. specifically in Alberta. What's the latest as of, uh, of 2016, okay. th this growing season? Yeah, so this growing season, there's, there was, um, first of all, we conduct a, a, an annual club root survey, which is kind of a general survey. Uh, to see what what the disease distribution is, uh, new, identify new cases, kind of monitor the spread, and, and uh, as of 2016, and we also well the, the university and Alberta Agriculture con conduct that survey together, and then we also incorporate information from the different counties and municipalities who do their own sur some of them do their own surveys, but they tend to focus more in at the. Um, uh, more in this in heavily affected regions, our, our surveys tend to be more in the periphery to see how it's spreading. And and between those two surveys, uh, so far there's been about 260 new cases of the disease this year. There's probably going to be more because we haven't had a few counties report in. I suspect we'll probably go over 300 new uh, independent confirmed cases of club root in 2016, which will bring the the total number of in confirmed infestations in Alberta to about 2,500 in total since surveying began about 12 years ago. So, so it's mainly centered in central Alberta, but it's, the, the, the outbreak has been slowly spreading from there right to the border with Saskatchewan and, and also moving a little bit north and, and south as well. So that's kind of the general club root situation right now. What about the, the new pathogen that there's been so much talk about the last few yeah, years? Yeah, so, so what's been happening is beginning, so the first club root resistant varieties were introduced in 2009, 2010. And beginning in 2013, we, we started to find some case, some fields where, where uh, the resistance was, was uh, seemed to be overcome or was not performing as it should. And uh, so what we've been doing, uh, again, in collaboration with Alberta Agriculture, is, is collecting samples from those fields and then just verifying the strength of the pathogen from, from, from those fields where resistance seems to not be performing as well, just to confirm whether it's a new strain of the pathogen present or some other factors such as, you know, the presence of, of susceptible volunteers or, or wrong field information. So where we found fields where there's a resistant variety being grown and there's, let's say, more than 10% uh, club root, more, more than we would expect, we collect samples and we test those in the greenhouse. So in 2013, we had two fields where we confirmed that there was new strains of the club root pathogen. In 2014, we found another 16 fields, and in 2015, we've confirmed 24 new fields. So we, we have at least 42 fields in Alberta where uh, new strains of the club root pathogen capable of overcoming resistance were identified. In 2016, we've so far flagged about 30 fields of concern. So these will be evaluated over the fall and winter to confirm that it, it is indeed uh, new strains. We've also been doing some work to, to characterize these new strains uh, on a series of, diff of hosts, of different brassica hosts, to be able to classify them into, into pathotypes. Because some of the differential systems we were using before to identify the pathotypes weren't truly capturing the full full amount of genetic di uh, of pathogenic diversity. So they would, let's say, two, two strains might be pathotype 5, but they were very different pathotype 5. One couldn't attack re resistant canola, another one could. So we've been developing more, uh, working on a, essentially you could call it a Canadian club root differential series. And so far we've identified over the last three years 13, 13 new strains of the, of the club root pathogen. Of, of varying uh, uh, virulence or ability or aggressiveness, and uh, but most of these 13 new strains are capable of overcoming resistance and, and breaking that resistance. There's one or two strains that are more common than the other ones, but but it seems and but some of them are, some of these fields where resistance has broken are separated by uh, some of them. Most of them are in Central Alberta, but some are as, up to 600 kilometers apart. So so we think that uh, resistance has essentially broken independently in different fields as, as maybe path, as, as uh, resistant varieties were grown in short rotations in those fields and kind of selected for components of the pathogen population that could break the resistance. So it's not that there's been a single source where this happened, it, it could no. have happened, developed in many areas. At that's right. Okay. Initially we thought maybe it had just 
been one field like in 2013 and from there it had spread and there's probably some of that going on but definitely there's been independent I think events where, where the, the populations of the pathogen have been selected for independently in different fields by the your practices on those particular fields. So these 13 different versions of, of the pathogen when mm -hmm. we have a, a variety that is has in the past been marketed as club root resistant how many of them could overcome that that resistance it, it depends but the, in most cases uh, all of them are or nearly all of them are susceptible so so they're still m making up if you think about it 40 right now 42 confirmed fields of 2500 so so there's still a relatively small or oh, quite a small percentage of the overall uh, club root that's out there but I think they serve as a warning sign, so I, I would say resistance is still effective in, in, in the vast majority of fields, but we have this kind of worrying trend, that a, sm a small number of the fields, a smaller percentage, which, but which seems to be growing slightly every year, the resistance is no longer effective. So, so, uh, so I think we, it's just something to be very cognizant of, and if farmers still have, if their resistant varieties are still performing very well in their, in their fields, and they have, uh, particularly if they have clevy, heavy club root, I think, they really need to consider, uh, you know, f uh, resistance stewardship and, and going into a bit, a bit of a longer rotation to, to prevent or to try to avoid a situation where, where they end up selecting for these new strains of the pathogen. How much uh, can they gain from using some of these newer varieties now that are, are, are marketed as having some resistance or some level of, of tolerance to the, the 5X pathway? Uh, I, th I think that there's, uh, there's, there could be definite potential. I, I haven't seen necessarily head-to-head -head performances, but, but certainly if, if a variety go, uh, is not completely susceptible, it, 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 may, it, it, it can certainly help maintain, maintain yield under high disease pressure. The, of course, the concern is that, that you know, every time we lose sort of the effectiveness of one source of resistance, we, we lose that, that tool at least for a while and, and, and the breeders have to find another source of resistance to put into the varieties and, and, and so it kind of becomes a vicious, vicious like circle, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in the long term, yeah. can we stay ahead of Clubroot with genetics or, or what do you see as somebody who, mm. who is so focused on, on Club root in, yeah. in canola in Western Canada, what yeah. is the, the long term result of this? You know, I, I think, I think Genetics is going to remain probably one of the foremost tools because it, it, you know other management strategies that we have either aren't as effective, are more expensive, or, or are very uh, impractical. So I think resistance, you know, it, it's it is still our most important tool. Now I think with proper management and and and, and awareness, I think it's a tool we can continue to use and and, de and develop. So. Uh, we just have to make sure we don't lose that, at least particularly in the short term if, if we had a more widespread uh, loss of resistance. So, so, I, so, I, so I, st I still think resistance will continue to be a, a key factor and probably the most effective uh, uh, and easiest method to, to manage this is we just, we just can't get complacent about it and, and, and assume, oh, because you know, for a couple of years we had such good control with, with a resistant variety, we're going to be able to maintain that, that level of control because the pathogen also is it's a living organism and, and it kind of responds to what we do to it too. So, so if we want to keep growing canola, we need to exactly if we, all these steps, Exactly. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if we don't want big gulls and, and, and stunted plants, we, we, we have to just take care of this resistance, which is really our, our most important tool. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thank Susan. you.